All right. So now we are going to look at graphing logarithmic functions. So before we do, we do that, uh, I want to remind you uh, how to do inverse functions, how to graph and get the equations of inverse functions. So I know you have f of x equals x minus 5, but I change it to 2x minus 4 here. If you can change it to, that would be great. So this sketch, uh, f of x equals 2x minus 4. As you see, the y-intercept is negative 4, so 0 and negative 4. The x-intercept is 2. So you get 2 and 0. So we can sketch this using these two points. So if you need to sketch inverse of this, remember what we do? We interchange x and y coordinates. So to 0 and negative 4, now it's going to be negative 4 and 0. And 2 and 0 will be zero, 0 and 2. 0 and 2. Okay? So that's going to be the inverse. Again, the first one is f of x, and second one is inverse. And let's remember what is special about function and its inverse. Uh, so they are symmetrical about y equals x line. So they are symmetrical about y equals x line. And if you need to get the inverse of uh, equation of the inverse function, so th this was the uh, steps, right? So you replace f of x by y, then substitute x for y, y for x, then isolate y from here. So we get x plus 4 equals 2y, and y equals x plus 4 over 2. So if it is a, a function, then you replace y with inverse notation and this gives you 1 over 2x plus 2 we kind of review this because now we're going to see that logarithmic functions are inverse of exponential functions okay so let's uh, review a little bit of uh, exponential functions so they look like this, right? If there is no transformation, y equals b to the power of x. There, b is always a positive number, first of all, right? We already discussed this before. And uh, if b is greater than 1, so like 2 to the power of x, 5 to the power of x, 10 to the power of x, so b is greater than 1. So those are going to look like this, right? They are exponential growth. And there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And y-intercept, when you substitute 0 for x, any number raised to the power of 0 gives you 1. So y-intercept is 1. How about if you have an exponential function, but this time the base is between 0 and 1, like 1 over 2 to the power of x, 1 over 5 to the power of x, 0 0.1 to the power of x, something like this. So they are exponential decay, and they will look like this. Again, the y-intercept 1, right? Because when you substitute 0 for x, that's what you get. And you still have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, uh, next question, uh, for next question, we are going to sketch y equals 10 to the power of x at its inverse, okay? y, x. So let's do a little table here. For x values, we usually take uh, three values that are negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay? 
tan 10 to the power of x is 1 over tan 1 and 10 if you substitute those values so if you sketch this so you have uh, negative 1 and 1 over 10 you have 0 and 1 and you have 1 and 10 so that is y equals tan to the power of x so if we sketch the inverse we just take those points switch their coordinates right so x and y coordinates so now i have 1 over 10 and negative 1 1 over 10 and negative 1 0 and 1 becomes 1 and 0 1 and 0 1 and 10 becomes 10 and 1 10 and 1 so if you sketch a curve over those points you get something like this so this is the inverse of tan to the power of x so again if you try to uh, write the equation of the inverse of tan to the power of x so you would substitute x so we are doing the inverse now okay equation of the inverse you substitute x for y y for x and you try to isolate it from here but you know uh, you, with the operations that you know you can't isolate y therefore you know they came up with an idea of logarithm we talked about this before so if you isolate y from here so you get y equals log base tan x and if the base is tan you just don't write it it is just log x so these two are inverse of tan to the power of x okay one is in exponential form the other one is in logarithmic form so basically this graph then is y equals log x okay uh, tan to the power of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero and log x as you see, we you know replace every x by y, every y by x. So then you get x equals zero as a vertical asymptote. Okay. So now let's write some um, properties of uh, log functions. So let's compare it with exponential functions. Okay. So exponential functions and logarithmic functions so the base is greater than 10 in this case it is an increasing function of course if you had a base between 0 and 1 that would be decreasing but in the, the one that we have is increasing function so then check the inverse it is also an increasing function so inverse is also increasing okay so let's look at their asymptotes uh, exponential fun function uh, for exponent fun exponential function x-axis is the horizontal asymptote or y equals zero so for logarithmic functions this time y axis is the horizontal asymptote or x equals zero so let's look at uh, y-intercept so y intercept for exponential function is 1, right? Y intercept is 1. So when you look at the logarithmic functions, you see x intercept is 1. X, if there is no transformations, then x intercept is 1. So let's look at the domain of the exponential function as you see is xcr, xer. 
x yeah and uh, range is y e r but y greater than zero and it cannot be zero because it is the asymptote so let's remember uh, domain and range of the original and inverse they switch right domain of the original becomes range of the inverse so then xcr becomes yer for the logarithmic function and also you can see it from the graph that range is yer so now range of the original becomes domain of the inverse then this gives you xcr x greater than zero and when you look at it you see that x is greater than zero right domain of okay so those are the properties so now let's sketch log base 2 of x so when the question is just like this you want you know substitute values for x and get coordinates now actually we are going to go to the uh, proper exponential function first and then get the points from there uh, and then sketch the logarithmic function based on that okay so if we need to sketch log base 2 of x then we need to go and look at the points from y equals 2 to the power of x okay so let me do the table here or just get the points for 2 to the power of x so let's do that okay so we can have negative 1 0 and 1 for the x coordinates then you would get 1 over 2 1 and 2 for y coordinates and then for y equals log base 2 of x you just switch the coordinates so you get 1 over 2 and negative 1 1 and 0 2 and 1 okay so 1 over 2 and negative 1 1 and 0 and 2 and 1 okay so if we sketch a curve over it that's what we get and of course we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 so that is log base 2 of x Okay. Now we are going to look at transformations of logarithmic functions. In general, transformations on logarithmic functions can be represented like this a times logarithm. So this is uh, the argument k times x minus d plus c. So let's remember uh but they represent right those letters represent so a does vertical stretch or compression okay stretch or compress if a is negative if negative then there is a reflection over x-axis K does horizontal stretch or compress. Uh, 
if it is negative it does reflection over y axis d is giving you horizontal shift and uh, we just talk about the vertical asymptote of the logarithmic functions okay so vertical asymptotes can be affected only by horizontal shift right it may go to left or right so this d then is changing the location of the uh, vertical asymptote so vertical asymptote is x equals d okay the equation of vertical asymptote x equals d and finally c value it does vertical shift it moves the graph up or down also let's remember uh, the mapping rule because we are going to get the uh, points from the parent function and we are going to use the mapping rule to get the points for the transformed function so x over k plus d a y plus c okay so x y coordinates becomes x over k plus d a y plus c okay having said that let's sketch y equals 2 times logarithm 3 times x minus 2 so you don't see any base it means it is 10 so now then we need to get the points from the related exponential function then we need to get the points for uh, parent logarithmic function and then finally using the mapping rule we need to get the points for this function given okay so again so the base is 10 you don't see it so first we are going to get the points of y equals 10 to the power of x So we pick three x coordinates, negative one, zero, and one. Then this gives you one over 10, one, and 10. So using those points, now we are going to get y equals logarithm x. logarithm base 10 of x so that is the inverse of 10 to the power of x so you flip the coordinates 1 over 10 and negative 1 1 and 0 10 and 1 after that we are going to now write uh, the mapping rule and transform those points okay so mapping rule x over k so x over 3 plus d plus 2 a y 2 y c is 0 that's it okay so we have 1 over 10 so we are going to divide it by 3 and add 2. 1 over 10 divided by 3 gives you 1 over 30. 1 over 30 plus 2, you can just write 2, 1, 30. As mixed fraction. Okay, y coordinate is negative 1, sub in, 2 times negative 1, negative 2. So next point, 1 and 0. So x is 1. So you get 1 over 3 plus 2. You can either write uh, 7 over 3 or 2, 1 third. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so substitute 0 for y, you get 0. 
Next point is 10. So 10 over 3, 10 over 3 plus 2. If you have a common denominator, you get 16 over 3. So 16 over 3. Or you could just write 5, 1 third. That's fine. So y coordinate is 1, sub n, you get 2. Okay, so we are going to sketch this. You also need to get the equation of the asymptote. X minus 2 you see here. So d what is 2. So x equals 2 is the vertical asymptote. X equals 2. Now let's place the points. So we have 2, 1 30, negative 2. So it is very close to 2. A point very close to 2. So 2, 1 30, and negative 2. So next one is this point. Again, it's close to 2, but y coordinate is 0. So 2, 1 third, 0. And next one is 16 over 3. Again, it's like 5, 1 third. Somewhere here. So draw a curve or these points. So as you see, you have to do kind of three tables to be able to get the points. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so y equals, let's look at the next one. y equals negative 3 log base 2 of 2x plus 8 minus so first of all, uh, you need to factor 2 from here. <laughs> Remember, k values always have to be factored. Okay, then uh, you see that the base is 2, okay? Then you find a related uh, exponential function, which is 2 to the power of x. So y equals 2 to the power of x. So parent function is log base 2 of x. Then let's call 2 to the power of x as like kind of grandparent, huh? something like this. You have to go back. OK, so then again, we take three points x coordinates are going to be negative 1, 0, and 1. So y coordinates are 1 over 2, 1, and 2. Then we need to get the log base 2 of x, inverse of 2 to the power of x. We just switch x and y coordinates. So 1 over 2 and negative 1, 1 and 0, 2 and 1. And the third one, now we're going to make uh, the mapping rule. x over k, so x over 2 minus 4 ay, negative 3y plus c, negative 4, minus 4. So let's convert the points. So 1 over 2 divided by 2 gives you 1 over 4. Now we are going to subtract 4. So negative 
15 over 4. Y coordinate negative 3 times negative 1 is 3 minus 4 gives you negative 1. Next point x is 1. 1 over 2 minus 4. 1 over 2 minus 4 gives you negative 7 over 2. So negative 7 over 2. Then y is 0, you get negative 4 here. So when x is 2, you get one, uh, 1 minus 4, you get negative 3. And y is 1, you get negative 7. Let's write the equation of the asymptote. Always do this after you factor out OK, right? Don't go from here because D value is 4. I mean negative 4. So vertical asymptote is X equals negative 4. So put vertical asymptote X equals negative 4. Let's put the points. Negative 15 over 4 is a number that is very close to negative 4. Okay, so and negative 1 somewhere here. Negative 15 over 4 and negative 1. The next point, negative 3.5 and negative 4. negative 7 over 2 and negative 4 and the last one is negative 3 and negative 7 negative 3 and negative 7 so sketch a curve over this you can also find x and y intercept of this of this function Okay, so let's say you want to find the y-intercept. So you substitute 0 for x. Then you get y equals negative 3 log base 2 of 0 gives you 8 here, minus 4. So 8 is 2 cubed. Then you get negative 3 times 3 minus 4 so negative 13 so it looks like this point here is the intercept which is negative 13 of course this graph is not scaled just points are labeled how about if you find if you want to find x intercept this time you substitute 0 for y. Okay, then we get 0 equals negative 3 log base 2 of 2x plus 8 minus 4. Then move negative 4, or let's move this logarithm. So 3 log base 2 of 2x plus 8 equals negative 4. So if we can divide both sides by 3, so log base 2 of 2x plus 8 equals negative 4 over 3. And finally, we just learned how to solve exponential uh, logarithmic equations. We can put this in exponential form. So you get 2x plus 8 equals 2 to the power of negative 4 over 3. Um, then we isolate x from here. I don't have enough space. Okay. Two x equals. I know we kind of got a weird value here, but it doesn't have to be always this. Okay. So then you get one over two to the power of four over three minus 8 
and then finally you divide both sides by two okay or keep the negative for now and then you can get rid of it okay negative four over three now we divide both sides by two if you divide two to the power of negative four over three by two okay so this is four but that one so you subtract the powers you get two to the power of negative so negative four over three minus one you do oops here okay and that was gives you that gives you a negative seven over three so two to the power of negative seven over three minus four would be the x value you can just use your calculator to calculate that it's going to be decimal okay not in integers